I am Kurula Vaghis uh, from Department of Electronic System Engineering, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. I am going to give this course on digital systems design with PLDs and FPGAs. As the name uh, suggests, it has something to do with the design of digital systems, um, and we will be implementing those systems in devices like PLDs and FPGAs. So, over the next 40 hours, I am planning to um, complete um, this course um, from the basic to advanced uh, portion. But before you st we start, I want you to do a, a, a small exercise. Uh, I wa please uh, take a pen and paper and write what is your idea or expectation of this course okay so basically uh, what do you think this um, uh, course is about what it is what is it content and why are you learning this course um, maybe uh, some people are taking this course to learn the basics of uh, digital design and learn it thoroughly maybe somebody is trying to get a job based on this course or could be somebody else um, has a similar course in the curriculum and want to um, get a complete the course uh, with some good grades. So, whatever may be your uh, purpose behind learning this course, please write it down. And uh, the last question I want to ask you is what do you think should be taught? So, uh, from the like you have some expectation of the course that is why um, you have come to um, this course. So, what do you think should be the content of this course? Please write it down. Uh, the idea is that in the next few slides, I am going to state uh, the objective of this course, uh, what are its major contents, so that um, you are clear at the outset what you are going to learn. Uh, by the end of the course. It is not good uh, if I do not tell you at the beginning and uh, you run through the course all the way till the end and realize this is not something uh, what you wanted to learn then there could be a problem. So, uh, when you compare what, what is the content of the course, what is the objective of the course with your expectation or requirement and if there is a serious mismatch. Uh, you can choose uh, not to attend the course and waste your time that is a basic idea. So, let us move on and let us see uh, what are the, the, the content of this course. So, mainly the, the course objective is digital system design. So, the main focus is uh, digital system design by which I mean uh, that somebody gives you a specification of a system from that specification how do you go uh, about implementing the system ok. So, the system could be a, a small system like a, a counter an arithmetic logic unit or it could be a microprocessor or you, it could be a system on chip a complex system on chip whatever given the specification how do you go about uh, implementing this having only the knowledge of the, the specification and the domain how do you go about implementing it that is the, uh, the first objective. Um, when it comes to the next one uh, say very specific objective suppose you have an algorithm uh, say you have a, a signal processing algorithm for a filter now how do you design an architecture for that filter. And in the parlance of digital VLSI many a times it is called front end design and front end means that you given the specification from the specification you go all the way to the logic design that means the design in terms of gates and flip flops. And uh, similar to the front end there is a back end design which takes this gates and flip flops all the way to transistors and the, the mask required for the chip uh, or the integrated circuit manufacturing ok. So, in this course we are mainly concerned with the front end design not the back end design 
Um, so, next step is um, that when you design uh, such a complex system, you have to partition uh, the system into pieces, into blocks and now you have to take each block and design the blocks in detail meeting the specification of each block and at least you have to do a timing analysis of each block to be able to work. There are many other analysis you need to do, but uh, at least at a basic level you should be able to make it work uh, in a functional way and it should meet uh, the basic uh, delay requirement. The third or fourth objective is the, the device technology. For this course we will be using two device technologies, one is uh, called the programmable logic devices or PLDs. Uh, the next one is field programmable gate array or FPGA. So, um, we will be using uh, these devices to implement our design. And the uh, um, fifth point is that uh, for entering the design, uh, for uh, designing the blocks or designing the system, we will be using a hardware description language called VHDL. Uh, the, the we will see what is VHDL later. So, the design entry in this course will be using VHDL. There is no particular reason to pick up this language. You could one could use languages like Verilog, but um, traditionally the, the FPGA vendors used to support VHDL more than Verilog and it is easy to move from VHDL to Verilog than from Verilog to VHDL. So, I hope that once you have learned VHDL you can easily switch over to other hardware description languages uh, when required. And I must tell that the main focus is still the digital system design not the PLDs uh, uh, or FPGA not the VHDL. We are going to learn this, but the main focus is still the, the digital system design uh, not PLD, FPGA, VHDL. We will learn all these thoroughly, but the focus is digital system design. And uh, in the course of the studies we are going to have some few case studies. I will draw examples from communications, embedded systems, computer architecture and all that these case studies. So, I hope we have some basic um, understanding of these topics. It will help you to, to understand the course better and there we do not have time for too many um, case studies. Uh, so, uh, it, I hope you have a, a background in these uh, topics. So, that is a course objective and let us move on. And the next question to ask is what is the prerequisite uh, for this course and or what are the, uh, the basics you should know before embarking on learning this course. And I really assume that you have some background uh, without which this uh, course cannot be learned. So, let us see what are the backgrounds required. So, essentially uh, you would have gone through some digital systems course or digital circuit course in the undergraduate program, I am not going to cover that part. I, I really uh, assume that you are thorough with these particular topics to start with. The Boolean algebra, you should be thorough with the Boolean algebra. Some kind of minimization algorithm, at least you must have done um, used Karnoff map uh, for minimizing and you should have learned gates. The combinational logic like uh, the, the encoders, decoders, multiplexers, demultiplexers, adder, subtractor and things like that. And uh, the sequential circuit like flip flops, registers, counters all this should be known at the functional level. And you should know the timing parameters of combination logic and the sequential logic. At least you should know what are the delay parameters associated with the gates, associated with the flip flops. Thereafter we can build the complex uh, timing parameters based on this basic uh, timing parameter. And nowadays you know that all the uh, digital circuit has built of CMOS technology or NMOS and PMOS transistors. Uh, maybe in the undergraduate program you would have learned about some other technologies, but that is not important. The currently what is used is CMOS, 
So, if you are not thorough with CMOS acute please uh, take some time to learn the basic NMOS, PMOS, uh, the CMOS acutes of various gates and so on. Okay. So, the next background I would require is uh, some basics of microprocessors because when we um, try to learn design as an example I will bring in the microprocessor as a case study. So, uh, I hope you know some microprocessors like 8085, 8086 or anything you have learned it could be some microcontrollers like 8051 or a, a risk processor as part of your computer architecture it does not matter if you know uh, how the processors are designed what are the blocks uh, in microprocessors that should suffice and the next background I require is some basics of computer architecture basically uh, the arithmetic logic unit instruction set and so on. So, um, if you have not learned you can refer to some good books on computer architecture and pick up uh, the basics of the computer architecture. Maybe I am not sure I will if required I will draw some examples from the computer networks or the communication networks. Um, I hope you would have learned at least one course in communication networks. I will try uh, to limit uh, the case studies to first two, but if required maybe I will uh, cite some case studies from uh, this uh, communication networks too. And so these are the prerequisite um, if you are not thorough uh, please take a break learn this from any uh, textbook any good textbook and come back and learn this course. So before getting uh, on to review the basics. Uh, I want to state um, the contents of the course various parts of the course. Um, this is essentially 5 parts the, the main focus will be on advanced digital design I call it advanced digital design because I assume that you have the background you know the basics of the digital design. Okay. In this advanced digi digital design part we will be mainly concentrating on the top down design or hierarchical design in particular uh, in a, a serious digital design there are two parts one is data path and the other is a controller and the data path talks about the computation um, the basic computation. So, this is the path where or the circuit where all the computation happens and the controller is the one which moves or which controls uh, the data movement within the data path and there could be one controller or multiple controller and definitely uh, after this we should be concerned with the timing that means how to get uh, to meet the timing requirements uh, part of the specification and there are many other things um, which when we go ahead uh, with this topic we will see. The next part is the programmable logic devices or PLDs uh, these are um, used in a small way uh, for glue logic in, uh, in digital design and we will see the architecture of the PLDs, the evolution of this architecture, the application of the PLDs, how to optimally design uh, a circuit using the PLD. The next part will be the field programmable gate arrays or FPGAs and we will see the architecture of FPGAs, the application of FPGAs and how to optimally design using FPGAs and so on. And the fourth part is this particular language hardware description language VHDL uh, the expansion is VHS IC hardware description language that means very high speed integrated circuit uh, HDL. And um, I want to emphasize that we will not be learning uh, all about VHDL our focus will be something called synthesis that means synthesis means that you write a code uh, you describe the hardware in a language and use a tool to generate the circuit. So, our focus will be to write synthesizable code that means you write some description of a hardware and give it to a tool synthesis tool it should be able to generate the circuit that you intend to generate okay that is a basic idea of synthesis. Um, many a times people write uh, 
uh, VHDL code which works very well in simulation but it does not properly synthesize or it makes no sense uh, as a hardware circuit. So we are not interested in that this being a hardware design course. Uh, so we will be concentrate, concentrating on synthesis aspect of VHDL. Similarly this course contain many case studies we will start with the case studies minor one uh, to illustrate the design uh, methodology design steps and so on. And when we come to the end of the course we will uh, take more complex um, case studies. So these are the 5 parts of the course but I am not going to teach it sequentially from uh, say from the, the top to bottom. Uh, I will start with the advanced digital design proceed come to a logical con end then come back to VHDL uh, to, to cover the basics of VHDL then go back to this advanced digital design then maybe handle these two uh, uh, you know complete the remaining VHDL uh, with case studies and uh, ultimately tie everything together uh, in this, this part ok. So that is the essential course contents by now I think you should have some clear idea uh, what this course is going to be but uh, definitely the that is the content I cannot talk about the, uh, the way in which I am going to handle this topics uh, which could be little different which you have to wait and see uh, my treatment of the uh, this particular uh, subject. So, um, Next uh, in few slides I would um, illustrate or I will say what I am expecting uh, you to uh, achieve at the end of the course. So or what competencies you will be hoping to develop or I expect you to develop at the end of the course. So at a system level I expect that you will be able to design a digital system given the specification meeting uh, the essential uh, functional timing requirements or constraints uh, you should be able to do that. In particular if you have an algorithm you will be able to design an architecture with the data path and controller with all the issues uh, you know related to it uh, sorted out. So let us look at uh, each module level. So, uh, so with regard to digital systems itself you will be able to design the data path and the controller using the high level combinational and sequential blocks ok. What I mean by higher level combinational and sequential blocks is that when you design in your undergraduate course or something like a say a full adder you will use some gates. When you design a counter you will use some flip flops and few gates and you literally uh, you know start with the truth table. Uh, work out the, the Boolean equation minimize it and implement it with gates and uh, flip flops. But when you design a complex system we will not be able to do it at the flip flop and gate level. We are going to use the non combination blocks like encoder, decoder, multiplexer, demultiplexer, adder, subtractor and sequential blocks like registers, counters and so on ok. So th that is what I mean by. Um, higher level combination and sequential blocks and you will be able to solve the functional and timing problems in the data path. Uh, many a times with your background uh, maybe you are able to solve some functional problem but not the timing problems. So we will concentrate uh, in this course quite a lot on the timing aspect of the, the digital design. Basically um, at the end of the course I hope you will be able to think timing ok. Many a times people are able to think functional aspects but I want you to think the timing aspects uh, too um, to develop that uh, capability. And when you design a controller or a finite state machine there are various issues uh, functional and timing issues and you should be able to solve that. And the last point is that when you have a digital system you may have different parts of the digital system. Uh, working with different clocks and uh, or there may be a part of the uh, system working with one clock and you will receive some manual input from a, a limit switch or a keyboard uh, to the system. And um, uh, unless uh, this is handled carefully because 
uh, an event happening in with regard to one clock or one manual process reaches the another part uh, unless it is synchronized to the receiving domain's clock uh, this won't be registered properly so that is called synchronization aspect and that as we will at least the basics of synchronization will be taught in the course i may not have time to uh, teach uh, the synchronization issues in very detail in this course but i will make sure that uh, the essential uh, synchronization will be handled in the course so let us move on to the uh, the vhtl the the vhtl part um, at the end of the course you will have the competency uh, given a block given a design you will be able to write a synthesizable vhtl code uh, to implement this block and in the in the in the reverse way suppose you have a, a vhtl code given to you then you should be able to infer uh, what is the circuit uh, that this particular code implements or given this code to a uh, synthesis tool what probable circuit the synthesis tool will generate many a times this is required because you will be working in a project team uh, you may have to handle the the code written by another designer who, who has uh, uh, worked earlier on the project and unless you are you are able to 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 infer the functionality of the vhtl code you will not be able to proceed so this is a a, a competency which is required and we will also learn how the vhtl simulator uh, or simulation tool simulate the code um, why this is important is that you know that the the uh, the language is a sequential language uh, but the hardware is concurrent suppose you have uh, say five outputs from some 10 inputs in a in a combination circuit any one of the input changes all the five output can change uh, but in a language when you write five outputs it has to be written one after the other uh, but when you simulate the functionality of this uh, 10 input 5 output system um, uh, everything has to happen suppose at 100 nanosecond one of the input changes um, say after some time all the output should change so uh, we will learn how the simulation tool handle uh, the concurrency um, and from a sequentially written statement uh, it is not very complex but it is for our understanding that is not for us to break the head uh, it is for the simulation tool to do all that what is necessary but a, a, a clarity in understanding is important and in a complex system you cannot manually verify or manually simulate and verify the, the circuit we have to automate it. So we will in VHDL these are called test benches that you, have, you can automate the whole verification process so we will learn uh, how to write test benches in VHDL. So this is um, the, the competency I hope you will develop uh, at the end of the course with regard to VHDL. So let us move on to the, the next topic PLD. So at the end of the course uh, with regard to PLDs I hope you will be able to choose a particular PLD for a particular application. Um, this in the case of PLD it may not be very complicated but still um, you would not at least uh, choose a PLD which is too small for to accommodate the design or you may not spend too much money uh, in choosing a complex PLD very very complex PLD for a, a, a smaller uh, application and so on. And you will be able to design and code to exploit the architecture features of PLD we will learn the architecture features of PLD and we will learn how to design properly so that those features of PLDs are best used uh, in our design so that uh, the, the resources are not wasted or we get the required timing performance. So these are the competencies uh, uh, you will develop at the end of the course. So let us move on to FPGAs with regard to FPGAs once again you will be able to choose a particular FPGA for a particular application and uh, as in PLDs you will be able to use the architecture features of uh, FPGA uh, to, to uh, design and fit a particular design within an FPGA and you will be able to design to meet the area and delay constraints 
um, and estimate the power consumption of your implementation within FPGA. So there are uh, these are little more elaborate than the, the PLDs and these devices are complex more complex uh, than the PLDs. So uh, these are the competencies with regard to uh, the digital system design uh, VHDL uh, FPGAs and PLDs I hope you will um, be able to, uh, to develop at the end of the course. So now I want to uh, in the course of the, the uh, lectures I will be suggesting some exercise for you to work off hand and uh, this will cover the various aspects covered in the course and basically deal with the concept many a times. Uh, students are little worry about the textbook kind of simple exercises but you have to trust me it is very important to do exercises which bring clarity to the concept okay. Um, many a times people are in a hurry to design uh, the real life uh, systems but unless the concept is clear you will not be able to uh, sort out the problems you encounter. Uh, come out with elegant design and creative designs and so on. So uh, it is very important to, to work uh, 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 with exercises which bring clarity to the concept uh, than some gimmick. So we can do all gimmicks uh, you know bring up LEDs um, or bringing some LCD uh, display with some text and all, all that that is uh, basically sometimes it is a gimmick or it impresses people but it may not uh, enhance the learning or enrich your understanding. So I will be uh, giving exercises or telling you to do some exercises which bring clarity and I will suggest some mini project towards the end of the course so that you can try to apply what you have learned in the, in the subject uh, to sort out some issues uh, in a small case studies and for these exercises you can use. Uh, the free web editions of the PLD and FPGA tools from major FPGA and PLD vendors like Xilinx, uh, Altera, Atmel, Lattice etc. And if possible you can try to uh, get some PLD FPGA kits which are low cost and try to implement uh, some of the exercises we discuss on this uh, FPGA kits. Uh, so these, these are the, the points I want to tell you about the exercise. So let us move on to the last part of the, the introduction these are the references. So these are some of the references but I will not be using um, any of these references uh, very uh, thoroughly I will be using uh, my own uh, notes my own slides and my own way of handling the, the subject but these are very good books uh, the Walkerley um, uh, digital design. Um, it is a very good book so even for the, uh, the basics in digital design you can use the same book suppose if you are not thorough with the basic in digital design you can use this book to learn the basics in digital design. VHCL for programmable logic by Kevin Cahill uh, this is a good book for VHCL for synthesis little bit old but very good book. Um, you could use any, any book um, uh, which is which handles the VHCL for synthesis. Then the VHDL book by Nawabi it is a kind of complete bible and then uh, for CMOS circuit you can use Westy Harris and uh, Banerjee's book on CMOS VLSI design. There is a book by Charles Roth uh, it is a very good book on digital design I have not listed here and I uh, will be referring to various uh, uh, literature in this field and FPGA PLD data sheets. So, uh, you can refer to them also I will say when I whenever I use these references. So this gives an introduction to the uh, to the course basically I have told uh, what is the focus of the course, what is the objective of the course, what is the content of the 5 contents of the course and uh, the competencies I hope you will develop at the end of the course uh, at, the, at, the, at the system level and in each part that is. Uh, what I have told and uh, the re reference books. So this is the basic introduction to the course. Now we will take some time uh, to review uh, the, the basics uh, which you have already learned which I assume you have but I will run through uh, give an overview 
of the field and run through some basics not thoroughly it will be a quick maybe uh, one or two hours of lectures on the basics then we will move on to the uh, real uh, digital system design. So, let us uh, look at um, a digital system design with PLDs and FPGAs um, an overview. So, um, I want to uh, you to have uh, some clarity about learning and design. In learning you always go bottom up that means um, see normally you start with transistors like CMOS, NMOS transistor, PMOS transistor, CMOS transistor and so on. Then after having learned uh, quite a bit about transistor you learn how to build gates based on this particular transistor say AND gates, uh, NAND gates, OR gates, NOR gates, inverters and so on. Then you will learn how to build combinational circuit based on this gates ok. Then build sequential circuit like uh, the controllers or the data path or uh, registers with combinational circuit uh, all that you will learn. Then ultimately you will learn how to interconnect all these in a system. So, when you learn you go from the smallest pieces to the complex system. But when you design it is opposite process we adopt we go top down suppose you want to design a microprocessor then you break the processor into pieces like ALU registers say program counter stack pointer um, and so on ok. Then you take one of the piece say you take ALU and break down into adder, subtractor and so on and then you pick one of the pieces from that and the adder is converted design in terms of XOR gates, AND gates and OR gates and ultimately these gates are converted to CMOS transistors. So, the, the hierarchy in design is always top down. So, anything complex you should try to do top down ok. Suppose you take an aircraft. Um, you cannot start with somebody designing a wing, somebody designing a fuselage and somebody designing an engine and ultimately bring it together uh, fit it together without any idea of the aircraft ok. So, anything complex maybe it is true with the, the software suppose you have a complex software uh, you cannot arbitrarily design pieces and put it together or you organize a function a conference. So, you cannot you have to have a global view say somebody will handle the uh, the program, somebody will handle the, the stay arrangement, somebody will handle the, uh, the finance, somebody will handle the travel and so on ok. So, anything complex should be handled in a top down manner, but learning uh, uh, should be always going from the basic to the complex ok. So, I am going to illustrate that in picture uh, to bring some clarity to it ok. So, let us move on to this. So, say at the when you learn at the basic level I call it level 0 you will learn about the MOS transistor say you pick up this N MOS transistor then you know that there is a P type silicon N type source and drain then polysilicon gate source and drain and the P MOS it is opposite you have the, uh, the substrate is of N type and the source and drain is of P type then you know you learn the IDS, VDS characteristics, what are the, uh, the character, how the IDS change with regard to VDS and for various VGS and so on and you learn various regions you know you have the, the linear region, saturation region, cut off and you learn sometimes some symbol. So, this is the symbol for an NMOS, you have a drain source and a gate and when the gate is at a higher voltage with regard to source it conducts. And for the PMOS when the gate is at a at a uh, higher voltage with respect to source then again it conducts normally uh, it is opposite voltage we apply and we know that and then NMOS is a good conductor of uh, 0 and PMOS is a good conductor of 1. So, having learned this MOS transistor then you move on to the gates. So, uh, take the case of an AND gate, AND gate is designed using PMOS and NMOS transistor. So, if you look if you have learned uh, this part is a NAND gate and this part is an inverter. So, this is a NAND gate 
followed with an inverter. So, you can see that if A and B are 1, um, these two transistors will be off, this will be on. So, this essentially uh, connect this point to the ground so which inverts it. So, if both are 1, 1 you get 0. So, any of the input is 0 then you can see one of the transistor will not be conducting. So, this path will be off and one of these transistors will be conducting. So, you will get a high here. So, accordingly you will get a low there. So, and that is the symbol of a gate. Similarly, you have like AND gate you have NAND OR NOR uh, XOR gate and the inverter. So, in the level 1 having learned the transistor you learn about the gates what are the uh, the input output relation in terms of the binary values uh, this gate implements. Now, once you know the gate you are able to go to the next level, level 2 say take the case of a full adder. If the full adder has a 3 input A B 2 bits and a carry input normally from a previous stage which gives a sum and the carry out which you can use it in the next stage. So, this is a full adder is a modular uh, adder um, slice which can be combined to form bigger adders. So, this is the truth table and you know that if any one of the input is 1 sum is 1, any 2 are 1 then the sum is 0 and the carry is 1, all the 3 are 1 then both are 1 ok. This you have studied and if you work out you know minimize then you will end up with this uh, expression. So, this is the next level in the level 3 you go you move from the full adder. Uh, to a, a say a 4 bit ripple adder. So, using 4 ripple add 4 full adders we are building a 4 bit ripple adder. This is the A0, B0 the least significant bit of uh, uh, the inputs. A3, B3 are the, uh, the most significant bit bits of the inputs and these are the sum. This is the carry into the first stage. This is the carry out of the next stage is connected as a carry input to the next stage and so on. So, knowing the full adder we will be able to build a ripple adder at the next level. So, we go further maybe um, you go to a multiplier. So, uh, this is the uh, this is how the architecture of a multiplier looks. So, if you care to uh, look at the, the multiplication algorithm the paper pencil method say here we are putting a 5 bit multiplicand and a 5 bit multiplier for each bit of the multiplier you form the partial products and you know that when it comes to the second bit uh, this is the power of uh, you know 2, 2 raised to 1. So, the, the partial product is shifted if the bit is 0 the 0 is shifted. So, ultimately you form the 5 partial products and you add it together you get the, the product, but then it involves lot of adders. So, in a realistic design to save the area we use um, a single adder and form the first partial product add to the accumulator which is 0 then form the next partial product add it. So, here you have an accumulator you have a multiplicand you have a multiplier ok. So, look at the least significant bit of the multiplier if it is 1 the initially the accumulator is 0 you add the multiplicand to it then you instead of shifting the partial product left you shift the, uh, the accumulator right and then this uh, the least significant bit of the multiplier is gone. The next bit comes here say so look at it if it is uh, 0 you recirculate you take this result itself put it back and shift it because it is equivalent to adding the 0 instead of adding 0 we take this and put it back and so on say so, do this 5 times then you will get the, uh, the desired result. So, which involves a 3 registers and an adder and some control which is not shown here. So, we can say this is the data path of a multiplier which basically use our idea of the adder ok. So, that is how uh, the, the, the learning happens you started with the transistor then move on to the gate uh, then we have moved on to the full adder then we made the ripple adder uh, then having some idea of the flip flops uh, you are able to build a multiplier or you are able to understand the functioning of a multiplier very thoroughly. But when you design, so let us look at the design how to design this multiplier you do the opposite. So, knowing the algorithm of the multiplier you design an architecture 
for the data path of the multiplier consisting of three registers and an adder. Now, we have to uh, design this adder and the registers in a detailed way. So, let us pick for example, the adder say assume that is a 4 bit adder 4 bit multiplier then we will design this uh, 4 bit uh, adder with 4 full adders cascader. So, the, the adder is broken down into 4 full adders. Now, you take the full adder and design using gates using XOR gates and 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 OR gates. So, this is a majority logic I mean any 2 or more than 1 input is 1 then the carry out will be 1. Now, the moment you do that you we know all the gates and then go to transistors and ultimately the, the chip um, masks are built from the transistor layout that is not shown in the picture. So, up to here from here to here to here is the, the fronted design that from the spec the multiplier algorithm we have come to the, 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 the gates and the flip flops. In this case there are no flip flops shown, but you know essentially a register is composed of flip flops. Um, suppose a, a 4 bit register is nothing but 4 flip flops in parallel and so this this is uh, very easily designed as, as 4 flip flops in parallel. So, this is how the design proceed in a top down approach and of course, you should have the domain knowledge to design. You should know all the pieces it is very important that you are thorough with all the building blocks so that you will be able to design it thoroughly and you should be able to sort out uh, the problems uh, as you uh, you know you encounter as you design ok. So, this shows the hierarchy of learning and hierarchy of design. So, let us move on. So, uh, let us ask what is the what are the major constituents of a design that means, um, suppose somebody tells you to design uh, a multiplier what should we focus on ok. And many a times students uh, the smart students say uh, it should be low power, it should be low area, uh, it should uh, work at 1 gigahertz frequency or high clock frequency and so on ok. But think for a moment you design a multiplier and you say it works at 1 gigahertz, but given some input say you give uh, to the multiplier 7 and 5 and it it gives an output like 42, but you say it works at 1 gigahertz it is of no use ok. Or you say um, it works uh, it consumes hardly any power uh, only micro watts, but the answer is wrong then it is of no use. So, that tells you that at the, 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 the primary um, part which we have to focus on is the function or the logic ok. So, when you design the, the, the first part or the first constituent uh, the first focus should be on function and logic. The power area timing everything comes later ok. The first will be function and logic and you are lucky in this way because you would have learned all uh, the building blocks in an basic course and I will list there are two parts combination logic and the sequential logic. So, the combination logic you would have learned all these you know you would have learned Boolean algebra, you would have learned minimization some algorithm like uh, Karnoff map uh, and things like that. You would have learned various functions like AND, uh, NAND, OR, NOR, XOR, inverters, the gates implementing these functions, something called encoders and decoders, multiplexers and demultiplexers, parity circuit, comparators priority encoder, open drain outputs, tri state outputs, mid triggers, uh, adder, subtractor, increment, decrement and so on. So, um, we are going to use all of these ok. Some may not be explicitly like uh, we may not do any minimization most of the time this is done by the tool uh, in a higher level design, but an understanding of this is uh, very much required to, to grasp uh, the concept and bring clarity into the whole game. And so, all these are very important what are these composed of how these are designed and so on. So, let us move on to the sequential logic uh, when the when it when we come to the sequential circuit the basic building block is uh, the flip flops uh, various type of flip flops like uh, uh, you would have learned D flip flop, uh, SR flip flops, JK flip flops, uh, T flip flops 
and latches and there is a difference between latch and the flip flops latches are by definition transparent when the clock is high the input output follows the input and when the clock is inactive the last input is latched onto the output in a flip flop normally works on the clock edge when a clock active clock edge comes the input is transferred to the output provided some uh, input meets some timing requirement we will see that and you would have learned some kind of counters uh, like ripple counter uh, synchronous counter a ripple counter is of no great interest to us so forget about it we will be talking about synchronous counters various registers parallel registers shift registers and so on and the finite state machines I am not sure whether you have learned this in the basic course but we will um, I assume that you, you may not have learned and we will put some time developing the concept and the design of finite state machine and various memories are important various kinds of ROM read only memories um, erasable uh, programmable read only memories or electrically erasable prompts similarly static RAMs these are fast memories which is used uh, um, uh, in a computer system at the, the level 1 as caches and um, level 2 caches and all that synchronous SRAM nowadays everything is synchronous with the clock DRAMs is a, uh, the secondary level of storage in a computer system these have the large capacity but uh, it is not as fast as uh, um, uh, SRAM and you have FIFOs which is first in first out memory that means you have two ports so on one port you write and one port you read many times the addressing is implicit that means you do not specify the address of, uh, the first dirt data you write will go to the first location and the second uh, you write go to the second location and uh, when a circuit read the output it reads starting with the first and the, the, the read pointers and write pointers are incremented depending on the read and one has to take care that one does not overtake the other and so on okay that there is no overflow or underflow. Similarly CAM normally it is defined as an opposite of a memory here uh, you have uh, data stored in a memory and you look for you search for some content that means you provide data it says uh, the location where that particular data is stored. So, in a normal memory you provide the address you get the data but here you give a data uh, then you get the address which is used in the cache memories and all search algorithm lookup algorithm use uh, CAM for it implementation. So, uh, this is the, the major um, constituent of a digital design uh, that is combinational logic and sequential circuit and if you care to look at uh, a data sheet maybe of a gate or a, or a PLD or a microprocessor the first thing in a data sheet uh, stated is the function of that uh, uh, integrated circuit. So, that shows uh, the this uh, the priority the function as over other factors. So, we have little time left let us move on to the uh, 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 with some of the, the blocks we have discussed I am not going to deal with all the blocks let us pick up some of these combinational blocks and just revise um, so that it brush up your memory. So, let us move on. So, with regard to minimization all of you must have learned Karnoff maps ok. This is uh, a very systematic method of minimizing from the min terms uh, to minimal product terms and this is a graphical tool. Graphical tool it is for humans to work out it is not for computer to work out. The equivalent computer algorithm is called Quine McCluskey uh, as in Karnoff map it provides a minimal solution but the complexity is very high it is kind of it has exponential complexity because it start with the min term. Suppose you have 5 variable uh, problem like A B C D E and you already give an expression to Quine McCluskey like A B bar it you know that it expand in terms of the phi variable. So, already minimize expression is taken back to get the, the, the absolute minimal or optimal um, the, the product terms ok that is idea of uh, Quine McCluskey. But you know that uh, given an, NP, an input that you have 2 raise to n 
uh, min term so the complexity is exponential and is very hard to, to, to compute using the coin Maclou's key. So mostly the tools use a heuristic um, algorithm called Espresso. Uh, this is based on coin Maclou's key but it is faster. So that means it, if it has a product term already which is simplified is not going to expand all the way to the to the min terms and start work reworking back. So but uh, since it uses some kind of heuristic method or shortcuts it is not going to produce a, an exact optimal or minimal solution uh, as in coin Maklowski but it will give uh, a near minimal solution and we do not care because many a times uh, we are not worried uh, about the area so much nowadays like it does not matter uh, instead of ending up with uh, say uh, 25 product terms you might end up with uh, 27 or uh, 30 product terms it should be okay in the present technology. So we will these tools will use espresso uh, kind of heuristic base uh, the tools for minimization or algorithms uh, for minimization. And the next thing you should realize a little bit about the real life is that uh, all these applies many a times to the two level implementation that you talk about and or 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 and or uh, sum of product or product of sum which you have learned in your uh, uh, the, the undergraduate program or the basic course. But in real life when you come choose uh, uh, the FPGAs or ASIC you do not stick to the two level implementation because it is not possible. So you will have to implement a particular circuit in multiple levels of logic. So you will have to apply some decomposition of a boolean expression or a circuit in multiple terms so that multiple levels can be implemented. And suppose when you have a multiple output suppose you have 10 inputs and 5 outputs then uh, you will have to for uh, a minimal um, uh, expression in terms for the multiple output you will have to find the common sub expression like maximal common sub expression of all the multiple output. So you need algorithm uh, to find the common sub expressions across the multiple output um, which minimizes uh, the area and many a time this involves uh, the steps like uh, the factoring, substitution, flattening uh, etc. for the multi level implementation of the digital logic. So the minimization is more complex than you have learned it uses heuristic algorithm and it concentrate on the multiple output minimization and multi level uh, minimization and so on. So these are complex those who are interested can look at the synthesis um, of digital circuit these are the uh, that is the subject which looks at this minimization algorithm. So let us move on. Um, so let us look at um, this part uh, functions and gates um, I just want to um, tell you that you would have uh, most of the time you confuse the gates with the function okay. So you take an AND gate then this AND gate uh, you take it to implement the AND function but many a times the AND gate can implement many other function than the AND gates AND function. So let us look at the truth table of an AND gate say uh, like in an AND gate when the both the inputs are 1 then the output is 1 that means A and B are 1 the output is 1 in the case of AND gate. So here we are treating the inputs are active high and the output is active high. So then it the AND gate implements an AND function but if you treat the AND gate inputs and outputs are active low look at the truth table if A, B are active low and look at the truth table if any of the input is active any one of the input is active then the output is active which is nothing but an OR function. So if for the same AND gate if uh, you treat the inputs and outputs are active low then implements an AND func OR function. So that is shown as an OR gate with, with showing the active levels. So uh, AND gate can implement OR function when the inputs and the outputs are active low and if for a 
a, a smart student it can easily you can easily uh, know that this is nothing but applying the de Morgan theorem. So, y is a b and if you take y bar it is nothing but a b all bar which is nothing but a bar or b bar. So, I am showing bar by a slash because I can uh, use the text for that. So, that is shown here. So, an AND gate can implement AND function or OR function and which is basically applying the de Morgan theorem or building the de Morgan theorem into the concept ok. So, uh, in the next lecture we will uh, continue with this. Uh, so, today um, the in the second part of the course handle basically we have looked at the major constituents of a design that is function basically what all you have learned in the basic undergraduate course um, the combination logic, the sequential logic all that is important. Uh, then we have looked at um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the functions and gates uh, before that we have looked at the minimization uh, the, the multi level multi output minimization uh, and the algorithm used for that. So, in the le next lecture we will continue with this, uh, this function um, maybe in next one or two lecture I will be able to cover uh, the complete uh, the basics needed a uh, run through the basics. Then I will also give uh, certain uh, the current uh, state of the art uh, in this particular field to give you an idea an, an overview. Uh, thereafter we will start with the main focus the, uh, the, uh, the real digital design um, showing the example how to go about designing uh, and uh, the concept. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, please go back and work on uh, the basics I have covered. Those who have not learned the basics, please go back to the reference book, learn the first few chapters uh, covering the combinational sequential logic, learn bit about microprocessor, learn bit about the computer architecture. So, that uh, when we move ahead, you are in sync. Um, I wish you all the best and thank you.